steaks and nothing but steaks. I want to put some salt on there about 45 minutes before I before I cook it. Can't go wrong with a, a RT 700 Rec Tech. Jess Files Hardcore Carnivore. Oh, look at that! See that? I'm proud to serve that. Well, this is one of the few times I would say we don't use grill grates. Right? In a low and slow environment, we're using the stock grates because grill grates throw so much heat up those raised rails, we don't want to cook these too fast. Yeah, and that's, and that's the, the thing. Now, if you can get your grill down really, really low, you could probably do it. But um, we've got the grill set right now. 220 should, should be perfect. Beautiful. And we're just going to go ahead. I'm going to set these in the middle of the grill. I love the color contrast between, you know, you've got the Jess Bryles Hardcore Carnivore. Oh, yeah. Johnny Joseph's uh, uh, steak rub on top, B&O underneath. Nice it, combination. These guys are ready to go, and now we're gonna we're gonna do that. We we'll probably go ahead and stick the uh, the probe in here, right in the middle there. We go. So now we got the probes in there. That'll kind of give us an idea of what's going on. We'll see Mark how quickly time, they're cooking. Twenty of the hour. All right, I'm gonna take the lid, drop that down. When I put the steaks on, I like to always go at a 45 degree angle, and I kind of go 45 degree angle with the high side to my left. We've got our gasser over here. The Weber's been getting hot as could be. In fact, I want to give it a little bit of a kiss of duck fat. You ready? Yeah. Hot. Look at that white. Woo! Woo! Oh, look at that. There we go. And then again, I'm going to go a little 45 degree angle, high side to the left. Nice. And then we got one more. And again, we're going to go high side to the left, 45. We've been about yeah. 60 seconds. It's time, I think. It's time? Okay. Yes. Let's go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Look at that. One lift and twist. Two lift and twist. Just to be oh. on the safe side, I want to get Let's a See where we're at? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's 111. That's great. That I think we're going to be perfect. Time. So, what's it's a minute now. We're a minute. You're ready to flip. Yeah. I have a pretty good idea of what these are going to look like. Gorgeous. Look at that. Now, there's the bite of char that I just love. If you tell me, Meathead, you there can't you taste that sear oh. bar, I'll eat your book. <laughs> now that's a kiss of char, that's beautiful. And I'm going to restart my timer. I would say, what do you think? A minute? 40, yeah, minute? Yeah, 45 seconds. So these guys are going to do a little kiss, right? Yep. I'm going to drop it on top of this is the Ruth Chris kiss. that this is, side. I love the way to finish the steak like that. Look at that. And then we're going to flip it over. We're going to yep. give it about 30 seconds-ish. Not quite. I don't even think probably you need about, Yeah, side, probably about 20 charred. seconds. Yeah, we already got a little char. I think we're ready to go. We're about 20 seconds in. Oh, look at that. See? That That's is a bite of char. That is a char. Oh, we're ready for a rest now. Here we go. One, two, and then we're ready to Let's let this, this reheat just for a second, and we'll get the tomahawk in. We need one more shot here of the, of the steaks. Yeah, this. I want to make sure that. That is pretty. We get a look at that. But you're at 112, so I think we're certainly ready. Yeah, we're, we're definitely ready to go. So we're going to pull the probe out. I got the hard job. I'm just going to open up the lid on the yeah. gas here. Lift these the guys up. Pump some smoke on that. The, oh, yeah. The hardcore carnivore Carefully, carefully. Yes. And I'm going to drop it on there. Right. What I hope is the hottest part of the grill. I don't think you have to worry about that. I All would right. say you're ready to twist. I think we're ready for a twist. About a minute, 40 seconds. Woo. Look at that. You're hot, baby. It is hot, and you can see the, the smoke that's coming off of here is all from that steak. Look at that. And we're gonna give it a twist. Fire in the valley's right there. Now that's pretty. Uh, a lot of this fat that's rendered is burning off. In the yeah, valley. it is, definitely. And that'll go away as soon as we close As soon as drop the lid, yep, that will choke it off. All right, I think we're about I ready. I think it is time, yes. Uh, it didn't go out all the way. Let's see what you get. Bring it over here. Yeah, I'm going to bring it over to this side. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, you got to get in there and get you're some gonna, get that. some picture of that. So we'll give it like one, we'll give it like 20 seconds, and we're going to give it a little a little twist. Take this. Twist. It's beautiful. Oh, move that back to a fresh part of the grill. Okay, so we're 30 seconds into yeah. the second Yeah, I think we're ready. Get, we're going to flip this guy on and do a little, little kiss. Yeah. On the flat side, look at that. We're That's gonna put pretty. that on there. We'll do about 30 seconds on that side. Yes. 
the look. All right, we're gonna flip it over for another 30 seconds on the other side. There we go. Oh, Mehead would be proud, I think. When he I think Mehead would be very happy with that. You want to take yeah, well, I'll take it off and out of your way there so that you don't have to uh, yes, keep I your hand oh, over the, oh. the 600 degree grill. I'd say we leave it right alone. Yeah, we're 20, yeah, 124, 125. It's going to. Because you know this is going to rise quite a bit. Now yeah, that I, yeah. Bites 130. Yeah, 130. All right. So we're bringing it all together now, hot yep. and fast. The tenderloins and the, and the uh, ribeye. Nice yeah, so we got the, uh, the, the tenderloin fillets. Um, and we've got the ribeye. We're going to go hot and fast. And so I'm going to put these on. As we, after we put these on, then we'll start making a little bit of a, an accoutrement, a little, a little schmear to put on top of the steaks. I all like right? That. A little schmear. Yep. Look at the corn. That's going to come off faster than I thought. It loves this snack crackle pop. All right. So put the fillets on, and then on go the ribeye. And so hot and fast, we're going to. It's going to take like a good three minutes plus before we're ready to do anything with those. Okay. So while that's happening, we're going to go ahead and get our get our butter. butter together. Here we've got just whole butter. Unsalted butter. Unsalted, whole butter. And then we've got a little secret ingredient here. We're going to put a little bit of beef tallow in there. I love that idea. Okay. So I think Meathead would approve of this too. I think Meathead would approve. We're not going to put a, t a ton. So I'm going to put what? I like that's maybe a tablespoon worth, not quite. A mm -hmm. two, two teaspoons is two thirds of a tablespoon, give or take. So we're gonna put that on there. You don't even need to put it in the grill; it's gonna melt right there. Yeah, I think there's enough. There's enough heat right here; it'll probably melt. We might throw it in the grill for a second just to sure. kind of like loosen it up. And then you've selected kind of what we use with a little bit of a hit of the the, the beefer dust. Right. The the stuff the that dust, the heifer dust. Yeah, Ben's Ben's heifer dust. So we'll put a little bit of that in there, and then the boar's night out, of course, you've got to. It's on here too, so we're yes. kind of supplementing so the put, oh. taste. That's okay. Yeah, it's maybe a little heavy, but it'll be all right. We're not putting a ton. We're just using it to, uh, to glisten up our steaks. And then you got Johnny Joseph's steak rub. All right. There we go. So we got these, and then we're going to stick them on the flat side just for, we'll do for like three or four minutes. You need a twist over yeah, there? Yeah, we're going to do a quick twist. These guys are nice and hot. So again, as I usually do on these steaks, it's easy for me to figure out what a 45 degree twist is going to be. On the round steaks, not so easy. Right. So usually I tend to do these more at almost like a 90 degree. So we're gonna put the asparagus, I wanna put it on the flat side here. So I get some nice, beautiful char all the way around. Before I drop the lid back on in a second, since we got some of this melted up, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm just gonna just, just brush a little bit ooh, on this that. side before I flip. And I'm gonna get some also after I flip, but yep, that should be good. Oh yeah, I think we're probably ready for a little twist. I tell you are. So we're gonna take this guy up, twist that over. Perfect. And now these are gonna be 90 degree twists, so. 90 degrees. All right, so I want to do something now. All right. I would like you to stand up these guys. Okay. The, just, just right. the, just the, 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 uh, the tenderloins. Just the tenderloins. That's one of my favorite things to do is cook the tenderloins. All right, so we're gonna stand these guys up. Yep. And sometimes you may have to stand them up with each other or make them go down. Yeah, I, I have, I have, I know that technique. I've done that before. So we take these guys and we're going to see if I can get up. There we go. So we're 30 seconds. A lot of times what I like to do with those those big tenderloins is just roll them around. Roll them around, side. yeah. Get the next side and then the yeah, next let's, side. Yeah, let's get the next side. And a lot of times you can get it going this way. All right, let's see if we can. Friend. There you go, you had it. There you go, you had it. Oh, I feel like I'm trying to stack golf balls here. There you go. So we're gonna give it a little quick kiss. Yeah. And we're gonna put it on that side first. Now, in, in an effort to not make a huge mess, I'm going to bring this over here so I don't drip it everywhere. So I'm going to give it a little, little touch of that. that love over here. I am. I, I, that's, where, that's where I'm headed next. Woohoo! Look at that. Look at that. Now I'm just going to put a little more on this. There we go. And then we'll come over here. Nice. Oh, look at the glistening. Glistening, yes. 
Now I'm gonna give that a little twist and hit it with a little bit more of that butter. Can't forget to give it a little love. And I think by the time I drop this on here, I'm gonna be about ready to take that ribeye off. I'm gonna make some room over here. All right. There you go, room right there for that. That one's, that one's just about ready to come off, I think. I think you're right. Yep. All right. What do you so think? that one fell down a little bit. I think it's, I think it's temp time. I think it's ready. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that Great. one's that Sweet. one's ready. Sweet. Well, that wasn't any fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom cooking on, a bunch of meat. Yeah, New Tom. York strips. A little filet mignon. It was yeah. uh, T-bone. The, the T-bone. I mean, it, we had we had all most of all of the uh, the beef steaks represented. Um, certainly there's there's some other ones that uh, that we didn't get into, but we got the the big ones, got, right? Yes, the ones that you're in the supermarket and the yep. ones you want to impress your friends with. Definitely. Um, it was fun. We, we low and slow. We used the Rectech to, to do a reverse sear. It was fun to go right from there, right to the hot gasser from 220 to 700 degrees at the grate. And, and I think the results were amazing. And then the flavor um, with that, that smoke from the pellet smoker, uh, I mean, I think it, I think that's a winner too. Tom right Hall. on the gasser was was pretty good too. I mean, I think it's it's a it's a combination of things that kind of makes the magical steak. I, I don't think there's any one simple thing or or two or three things so that you do. So it isn't all about sear marks, even though we've had this back and forth. But oh, I think I think sear marks are to to have those nice pretty kind of like what we think of as the, the steakhouse sear marks. I think that just communicates to the people that you're cooking that, that there's some time and effort that was put into it. But then we flipped it over and we gave a little kiss on the flat side mm -hmm. and we got a little bit more color in there. And I think that just shows you why the, the grill grate works so well. Well, the versatility of the grill grates really shows itself. I mean, we're kind of synonymous with great steaks. I mean, a lot of our customers tell us they're grilling their best steaks of their lives. but my techniques have changed a lot. I've learned a lot from you. I've learned a lot from the steak hook off guys. It seems like this has become an art form in the backyard. Uh, and and I, think you, I think you hit it right on the head with art form because cooking is a combination of art and science. And I think when it comes to steaks, you really, it's art because you can end up with the same thing that, that generally tastes the same doing it like seven or eight different ways. And it's a matter of what you, as the person who's cooking it, is comfortable with and what you're trying to, to get on the end result. And that's the reason why grill grate is perfect because rails up, rails down, or half and half. And we showed you do half and half. It, it works great either way. I think the thing that I've, I'm gonna take away that I haven't been doing, and I'm gonna be doing more of, taking that unsalted butter, throwing a little beef tallow in, and then a few seasonings in there, and just painting it at the end adds just another layer of flavor. It's really impressive. It, it does. I mean, it's, it's flavor. It gives you, you put a little bit on there before you, you flip. Shine. It's going to, yeah, it's going to give you shine. It's going to help you release a little bit, help, you know, keep the seasoning on your uh, on your grates. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's an important part. And that little bit of tallow just gives you that, that little bit of extra flavor. Because I know it's a secret ingredient that some barbecue places like to wrap their briskets up, squirt a little tallow in there, just to kind of help keep the, the flavor or right. boost that, that kind of beefy, nice. meaty flavor. So, so yeah, definitely. But if you're a backyard cook and you want to really learn how to grill a great steak, listen to this guy, I mean, have fun with this. You can do so much with the grill grates and then adding all these seasonings and then these techniques, it's just flat out fun.